Because the probe contacts the surface in atomic force microscopy, mechanical interactions between the probe and the surface are extremely important. These are surprisingly long range. The formula on top of the slide on the left is the famous Leonard Jones formula. And so if one considers then that the interaction energy in some small uh, volume is equal to some constant times the density of atoms in the surface, the density of atoms in the probe, times the volume element of the surface, a volume element of the probe, uh, all divided by r to the 6, then the total interaction energy will be the integral of this expression, but over all of this infinite surface, and over all of the volume of this probe of radius r, some distance d from the surface. Surprisingly, when this integral is carried out for this geometry of a sphere adjacent to a surface, the total interaction energy turns out to be uh, proportional to the radius of the probe divided by the distance from the surface. So this falls off as 1 over distance. It's a very long-range interaction indeed. The force produced by this uh, interaction will be just the derivative of this interaction energy with respect to distance, and so then this changes the sign and puts in a d squared uh, at this point. So there is a long-range attractive force between a probe and a surface, and this leads to an interesting problem in bringing a probe close to a surface. So if I were to sketch uh, schematically the force against the distance between the probe and the sample, at long ranges it's an attractive force, so it's negative, increasingly uh, so, uh, approaching the surface. And then as you get close in, there is a large repulsive contribution like this. So in equilibrium, this force as a function of d must be equal to the restoring force for the spring as a function of the deflection z of the probe towards the surface. So here is a probe, and it will be deflected some amount uh, z. There will be a force that's a function of this distance between the probe and the surface, pulling the probe into the surface, and a restoring force equal to k times z, pulling the probe away again. So when the rate of increase of the surface force gets to be large then, there comes a point where surface forces will pull the probe into the surface. To see this, let's solve graphically this problem of a nonlinear surface force and a linear restoring force. If the spring on the tip is very stiff, then the slope of a line f equals kx will be large, and this line will only cross these curves at one point. If, on the other hand, the probe is uh, not so stiff, then the slope of this f equals kx line will be small, and <clears throat> the solution, uh, the crossing points, will be multi-valued, meaning that once we reach this point here on this approach, the surface forces increase more rapidly than the restoring forces, and so the probe will jump into contact with the surface. Once the probe has jumped into contact with the surface, adhesion takes over. Almost all surfaces are sticky to some extent or another. A clean surface is particularly so. If you imagine atoms inside a, a solid that are all perfectly bonded together, a surface energy arises when we cut the solid to create a surface from all of these dangling bonds. Surface energies can be very high indeed, what happens is as soon as we expose the surface to air, atoms and molecules are absorbed to lower the surface energy, but a typical value for the energy per unit area um, is on the order of 0.5 joules per square meter. So from this formula you see here, which just comes from um, evaluating the contact uh, area, uh, a probe of radius r uh, results in an adhesion force given by this formula which is on the order of 6 uh, nanonewtons 
for a probe radius of one nanometer. This is a considerable force. Putting these components together then uh, results in a particular shape for the plot of deflection of the probe as a function of distance from the surface. So up at the top here we show what happens with a weak a spring and strong adhesion forces. Exactly a situation one doesn't want in atomic force microscopy. So in this case the force against height plot would look um, flat at uh, large distances because there is no deflection of the probe. As the probe gets close to the surface, uh, it will begin to deflect through long-range interactions and then jump sharply to contact. Once it contacts the surface, for every nanometer that the surface is moved up, the probe is moved up a nanometer, and the result then is this slope here at 45 degrees on this force versus height plot. This is how one calibrates the deflection of AFM cantilevers. Now, on the way back, the probe is stuck to the surface with some adhesion force, which I'm showing here by this uh, negative force on the plot, or alternatively an adhesion energy, which is the area under this curve. So the probe remains stuck now on the retraction, finally jumping out of contact out here somewhere, and then um, the deflection remaining independent once the probe is no longer in contact with the surface. The plot in B shows what happens with a strong cantilever and strong adhesion. A strong cantilever can avoid jump to contact, but it cannot avoid adhesion. The best situation for AFM imaging is what is shown in plot C, uh, where there is both a strong cantilever and weak adhesion. So for optimal AFM can, uh, imaging, one tries to avoid A jump to contact, and B adhesion between the probe and the surface. And this can sometimes be done by chemically treating the probe or using the right kind of fluid environment. Finally, we turn to the question of resolution in an AFM. AFMs can get atomic resolution, but only on very flat surfaces, as illustrated in this uh, figure right here. Uh, as soon as the surface ceases to be flat, atoms on the end of the probe can no longer dominate the imaging. And then what one samples is the long-range geometry of the probe. So this figure here shows you how a step on the surface like this, imaged by a probe of finite radius like this, yields an image that is of the probe itself, uh, far from the step. The step height is reported accurately, but then again, the image is broadened by the finite radius of curvature of the probe. And so it's therefore extremely difficult to resolve features in an AFM image uh, on samples that have any degree of height variation at all um, for features that are smaller than a few nanometers.